What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. We've got a slightly strange one for you all today and it's something that crossed my desk not that long ago. But I thought it was so strange that I just had to do a video on it. As of the time of making this video though, the information about the incident is a little bit up in the air. So as such, it might be a slightly shorter one than normal. Some of you though might have seen it doing the rounds on the news over there in America, especially if you live in or near Florida. And it's all to do with a really bizarre behavior that's being observed in fish in the Florida Keys, including sharks and rays. But the crazy thing about it is that what's causing it remains somewhat of a mystery. The scientists working on this are really scratching their heads. Anyway, back a few months ago in November 2023, scuba diver Greg Furstenworth was doing a pretty standard dive on a seagrass meadow in the Florida Keys. It was nighttime, so he had his flashlight with him, and as he was looking around, a fish caught his eye. That fish, which was identified to be a pinfish, was swimming through the seagrass in a way that just wasn't normal. It was spinning and whirling in upside down circles, which is definitely not a standard fish behavior. At the time, Greg thought it was hilarious, so he decided to record it with his underwater camera, not knowing that this bizarre behavior actually had slightly more morbid connotations. Greg began hearing more reports from other friends and divers in the Keys, so he started to document as many examples of the behavior as he could. Initially, the majority of the sightings were occurring on a 35 mile stretch of water in the lower Keys, but then it began to spread. Spread. The behavior began popping up in the Upper Keys as well as Miami, and importantly here, it was now being seen in different fish species. As of March 2024, the whirling spinning fish behavior has been documented in 44 different species of fish living in the Florida Keys. Here you can see the range of different fish species that have shown the behavior in the last five months or so. So we've got snappers, groupers, lionfish, sardines, remoras, mullets, needlefish, and importantly here, there are several elasma rank species on this list as well. So we've got the Atlantic stingray, the bonnethead shark, southern stingrays, and very alarmingly, the small tooth sawfish. So we can see it's impacting a really wide range of teleost fish and chondrichthian fish as well. It's not just confined to a few select fish species, it's a lot of them. And it's even more concerning that the small tooth sawfish is impacted because that's the only sawfish species in Florida waters and it's an endangered species as well. If we take a look at some of the clips of sawfish displaying this behavior, we can see just how strange it is. There are tons of examples all over the internet from the past few months of sawfish doing exactly this. They seem to be essentially stranding themselves in shallow water, thrashing around in circles repeatedly, and there are lots of examples of the sawfish with their rostrums just completely out of the water, shaking them around. Then we've also got a few odd clips of some of the other stingray species swimming upside down and backwards, clearly in some kind of distress. To date, 27 small tooth sawfish have been reported as dead to the Florida Wildlife Commission, and a further 60 have shown signs of distress. 27 dead sawfish might not seem a lot, but we have to consider here that's 27 that have been documented and retrieved. The numbers of sawfish that have likely died from this illness that haven't been documented or retrieved is probably quite high, and those ones just go under the radar, which is really alarming for this species because they think there's probably only around 500 to 1,000 adult breeding females of this species that are left in Florida waters, hence why they're endangered. And when you start to lose these big adult breeders, that's when you're gonna get serious population declines. Now, when I first spotted this, my immediate thought, the thing that I first went to, was this has to be because of a red tide. What's a red tide, Chris, I hear you ask? Well, a red tide is the common name for a harmful algal bloom. They tend to occur when colonies of algae begin to grow out of control, and at the same time, this microscopic algae can deplete all the oxygen in the water, as well as produce toxins that harm fish. And then if you were to eat that fish, it could also harm you as well. The algae becomes so numerous that they can on occasion literally discolor the water red, hence the name red tide. There are loads of factors that can cause a red tide, including warm ocean temperatures, low salinity, calm seas, and so on and so forth. But it should be said that red tides have been increasing in their prevalence since the 1980s. I did also want to point out here that red tides in the Keys are often caused by an algae known as Karenia brevis. Yep, the Karen algae.
The carrion algae can produce brevitoxins, which are these powerful and potent neurotoxins that can harm wildlife and also harm humans as well. So my first thought after seeing this weird fish behavior was that it had to be a red tide. The algae produces the neurotoxins, which can cause changes in the fish's brain, and that would lead to them doing the whirling, circling behavior. It's a pretty standard thought process. But it turns out I was absolutely wrong. The scientists that were looking into this issue had headed out to the Florida Keys and taken a bunch of different water samples. And the wretched carrion algae brevitoxins weren't being found in any of the water samples. There was no evidence of a red tide in the Florida Keys. As well as this, they found the oxygen levels in that water weren't low and the water temperature wasn't that high. So that would suggest this has got absolutely nothing to do with a red tide. There is, however, a disease in fish called whirling disease, which shows pretty similar symptoms as to what we're seeing here. That one is caused by a parasite that infects fish, but it's mostly seen in river fish like salmon and trout. And importantly here, based on the scientists' analysis so far, they haven't found any parasites in the dead fish that they've examined. They've dissected a lot of the dead fish that have washed up so far and have found no communicable pathogen within those fish, which means that it's not a disease that's being passed from animal to animal. And they didn't even find any bacterial infection in the fish either. This is what I was telling you about in regards to the scientists just being baffled by it. All of the normal causes for this kind of fish kill event have been ruled out. But because those other causes have been eliminated, the scientists are now starting to whittle it down to a potential culprit. The investigation as of currently is focusing in on an algae in the genus Gambia discus, which produces something known as ciguatoxins. This toxin is naturally occurring and is usually harmless, but in high levels, they can cause an illness known as ciguatera, of which the symptoms are vomiting, nausea, and neurological distress. Basically, if you eat a fish that's been exposed to the ciguatoxins, you're gonna get food poisoning, and it's going to be a very unpleasant experience. Some of the scientists investigating this phenomenon took some water samples from the Big Pines Key area, where some whirling fish had been sighted, and they found about 1,000 Gambia discus cells per liter of water. This number is way above the normal range of around 30 to 40 cells of Gambia discus per liter of water. Alongside this, some of the dead fish that have been examined showed presence of ciguatoxins in their bodies. And in some earlier experiments, fish that were fed with food containing ciguatoxins displayed some strange neurological symptoms, including hyperactivity and twitching. This has given the scientists some clues as to what's going on with these whirling, circling fish in the Florida Keys. And they're now in the process of conducting a couple more experiments. One involves them exposing fish in laboratory conditions to water collected from Big Pine Key to see see if they display similar symptoms. And in the other experiment, they're exposing fish to the toxins in artificial seawater at the same levels as to what they were finding in the Florida Keys. If the fish from these experiments start to show similar symptoms as what they're seeing in the wild, then the scientists might be onto something. Other shark scientists are directly comparing blood samples taken from sharks before the whirling outbreak started to now to see if there are any direct changes in the blood of these sharks. And this should help them understand whether there's gonna be any long-term health impacts on the shark and ray species that are affected. I should also note here as well, there is mounting evidence that climate-driven warming is causing a range expansion for the Gambia discus algae species. Previously, it's been limited to somewhat equatorial waters, although now it's moving northward to higher latitudes in America. In the last 20 years or so, it's even spread as far north as North Carolina. So we could start to see this weird spinning fish phenomenon reach fish all along the east coast of America. It's most concerning for those sawfish though. Man, that genus of elasmobranch really cannot catch a break at the moment. And it's already so widespread in those sawfish as well. It's not just the sawfish in the Florida Keys that are being impacted. One of them was even found showing the behavior off Boynton Beach in Palm Beach County. That's 200 miles north of the Florida Keys. You just can't quite stress the significance of something like this happening to that species. The recovery of small tooth sawfish is almost entirely dependent dependent on that US population. So when something like this happens, it's very worrying. At the moment, the scientists don't really know whether this fish kill is a one-off event that's gonna be over in a year, or whether it's gonna be continuing over the space of a few years. If it's the latter, then some of these fish populations, including the small tooth sawfish, are in a real spot of bother. But one of the most vital components of it all is that you've got a lot of scientists working collaboratively on this. You've got the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, the Department of Environmental Protection, Action. Alabama University, the Florida universities, all of them are working hard to solve this. And that's how you figure these things out with collaborative effort. I'm not really 
sure which way this is going to go, guys, but I am really keen to hear what you guys think about it. Have you already heard about it on the news over there in the States? Have you got any thoughts on what might potentially be causing it? I want to hear all your thoughts in the comments below. I know for a fact we've definitely got a few Florida subscribers here on Shark Bites, so if you've seen this behavior or you've heard about it, please, please do let me know. Just a little short one from me then today. I know you guys tend to prefer the longer form content, but that's the thing. When we don't really know what's happening, there's not that much I can tell you. If I do get any updates from colleagues over in Florida, then I'll make sure to pin those updates to the top of the comments. So if you're interested in seeing how this pans out, make sure you come back and check the comments. For now though, please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button below. Maybe even consider turning your notifications bell on for Shark Bites as well. Although before you all click off to get lost in a YouTube rabbit hole, I think you might quite enjoy this video. In it, I look into the death of popular TV personality, Steve Irwin. Have you ever wondered why the Stingray did what it did that day? Well, wonder no more because in this video, you're gonna learn exactly why it did it. So make sure you give it a watch here.